feels like I, I think I got bit by something. Guys, David, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. Today we're looking at some of the worst cards in the newest main set of the game, a uh, Rising Rampage. These sets all have the same name. And before we get started, I just want to bring attention again to my June edition of News Geo. Uh, we're actually working on the July edition, so I just want to make sure you guys. You guys watch the June edition of my super, super highly edited, <laughs> takes a ton of time June edition so you guys can get hyped up, hyped up for the July edition. A lot of people are giving the set a lot of flack because it doesn't seem to be a very good set. However, um, it's got some cool tech cards in it, I, I guess. But most certainly it is full of some seriously bad pack filler, and that's what we're gonna look at today. Those extra secret prismatic things are not going to make any of this any better. Nice try, Jerome. Actually, this list could have been a lot longer than uh, than 10. <laughs> uh, but I, I think that these are some of the weirdest cards, at least, if, if not the worst cards in the set. So let's just get started. Number 10 is Win, the Verdant Wind Spirit Charmer. This link to Wind Spellcaster Monster with 1850 attack has the following effect. Two diagonal down arrows. You can target a Wind Monster in your opponent's graveyard and special summon it to your side of the field in a zone this card points to. If this link summon monster is destroyed by battle or your opponent's card effect, you can search one win monster from your deck with 1500 or less defense. You can only use each of its effects once per turn. And it's a, it's made of two win monsters. I don't remember if I said that. Okay, so it's just like boneless great fly in most cases because unless you're playing against some sort of weird mirror match or there just happens to be a wind deck in the meta, this thing's gonna be dead a lot of the time. And I think that's its, its biggest problem is that it's extremely meta dependent. If for some reason, I don't know, Harpies were meta, then sure, this would be a great option in a mirror match. Maybe if you're playing a rogue deck and you played against Sky Strikers, you could you could nab that one, the Wind Link. I don't know, it feels clumsy. And obviously being a 2019 battle tutor is not exactly the uh, most impressive thing in the world either. It's very lackluster. However, I could see it being kind of useful in the right deck, in the right format, sometime in the future. So that's why we made her number 10. Number nine is Baba Barber. Ba Baba Barber. She's a barber, you can tell, because she has scissors and straight razors, and her hair looks fantastic and she's a witch i guess because she's a dark fiend she's like she's like baba yaga do you think her you think her like barber chair has like chicken feet oh darling you're going to look so good for fancy date later it's good hairstyle <laughs> this link too is made of two monsters that's it i think this might be one of the single most like generic extra deck monsters we have in the game <laughs> two monsters that's it with a left and down arrow hmm Okay. At the start of the battle phase, you can target one card this card points to and banish it until the end phase. You can only use this effect once per turn. Uh, why is that what this card does? Why, why would you, why would you want to do that? It's not like Security Dragon where it points like up and down so you could like get rid of a problem card on your opponent's side of the field. That'd be kind of solid. No, it, it points to the left and it points down. So it's like, it's only ever pointing at your own stuff. So why would you want to banish your own thing? Again, it, it kind of plays into that weird idea that like we all thought links were going to be before we really got a hold of them where we like, we thought we'd have to be moving a bunch of stuff around in order to make these work. But again, I've said this before, if your link summoning properly, your link chains shouldn't really require you to move very much stuff if your extra deck is built properly. Oh my god, go away! F*** you! So I guess the idea was that you'd be banishing one of your own guys so that when it comes back you can like move it somewhere else or get it out of the way, kind of like what people do with Omega, but it's like during the battle phase so you can't even do it like mid-combo. So, it, um, Her arrows are okay though and she's super generic so I could see people playing her simply for what she is, not for what she does. 
Number eight is Reversible Beetle. See, I hate that Reversible Beetle's on this list because I actually think it's, it's kind of cool. Reversible Beetle is a level three earth insect monster with the following effect. Flip. Oh, wow. It's a flip monster. Shuffle this card and any face-up monsters in its column back into their owner's respective decks. So uh, at most, it's it's like flip, it's what, doing a link monster on your side, a link monster on their side, and itself and an effect monster. That's, 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 that's four monsters that are getting shuffled back into the deck, I guess, at most. Obviously, it's gotta be like face down, so maybe sub-terrors or crawlers can do something with it. It's decent removal, I guess. It's a hard once per turn for its effects, so it's not like you, you could keep using it. I guess you're probably better off using something like Hain Hain if that's what you really want. However, when it's normal summoned, it book a moons any face-up monster in its column to face down with itself. So it's like a Tsukiyomi and a Hain Hain in one card, although it's column dependent. I don't know, I just think it's kind of cool. It's a really easy way of just outing stuff. It doesn't target, so that's always kind of handy. However, it doesn't work on Link monsters, so. More often than not, if you summon it into the zone below an extra deck zone, it might not actually work on everything in the column, so you don't get as much use out of it as you think you do when you first read the card. I don't know, it's kind of lame. I think the card's actually kind of cool, and if it was like, I don't know, 10 years ago, it'd actually probably be a, a solid card. You might actually consider running it, because like I said, it's Tsukiyomi and Hain Hain in one card, and that's that would have been pretty alright for old Yu-Gi-Oh. This would be cool in Duel Links, I think. Oh, I hate this card. Spirit Sculptor. It's the eyes. <laughs> creepy, creepy artwork aside, what does this thing do? This level four light fairy lets you tribute one monster on the board, then search one monster from your deck whose attack and defense sum equals the attack and defense sum of the monster tributed. It's basically something like that, where it's really dependent on you doing some math in order to get cards, but in theory, potentially, this can search pretty much every monster in the game. So why is it bad? Well, because like, you gotta tribute a monster. So it's like, you're not getting any advantage. Also, like, ideally, uh, what you wanna do is normal summon this and then tribute itself, instead of tributing something else, because that's really clumsy. But more likely than not, you're actually probably sacking itself and searching something that it's equal to its own attack and defense added up, which is 3,700. Quick maths. However, this is actually one of the one time where like the the, the, tri the tips in the, the wiki are actually like super useful because it seems like somebody who had more time on their hands than they knew what to do with compiled the list of whatever this thing can search when it sacks itself. Most of it is a bunch of random garbage, but there's a couple interesting cards in there. Probably the one that stood out to me was Necroz of Brianak, actually. Which you're like, all right, well, why would you ever play this over like Manju? If your opponent has played a floodgate that is preventing you from playing more than one type of monster, the uh, rivalry of the warlords? Which a deck like Necroz has a problem with because all the incantations are different types and all the Necroz are different types, so it's actually quite difficult to ritual summon when your opponent flips that on you. I guess one could say you could side this in because it gets itself off board, so now you can perform a ritual something of a summon of something that's not a fairy. Or you could just side an MST or Twin Twister or something and have it be more useful in more scenarios and actually be good Yu-Gi-Oh! But I will not deny this thing's one function. It kind of follows this theme of all the bad cards in this set are at least kind of cool. They're terrible. You'd never use them, but it might accidentally be good one time. Poor Aqua Spirit. He's either in pain or really enjoying this. <laughs> and anyway, next card. Number six is BES uh, Blaster Cannon Core. Big Erection Ship Blaster Cannon Core has the following effect. If your opponent controls more monsters than you, you can special summon this card from your hand, like a Cyber Dragon. You can only control one. When this card is summoned, you put three counters on it, it can't be killed in battle, and at the end of a battle phase, you remove a counter from it, and if you can't, you kill it. It's a BES monster. More like a BS monster, ha <laughs> ha. If this thing was a level 10 and not a 9, I'm sure trains would use it, or at least could think about using it. As a BES monster, I have no idea whether this is what the deck wants or not. I don't think so, and the deck's bad anyway. Rip all the BES players. <laughs> all three of you. It's just like, this would have been okay when like the field spell came out is like another card, but it's like weirdly late support and it's just not very good or fantastic or really doing anything. It's just a body on board. It doesn't really forward your game state at all. I don't know what it's supposed to be doing. It's not very good for a rank nine deck. <laughs> there you go. 
Number five is Vic Viper T301. It's a spaceship. Pew, pew, pew. It's, I guess, one of those Gradius cards. The name sounds like an 80s action hero. Yo, I'm Sylvester Stallone, and I played Vic Viper in Gradius 2 Electric Boogaloo. Adrian! Whatever. What does it do? Level 4 light machine with 1200 attack and 800 defense. When there's a battle involving one of your face up monsters and an opponent's monster, you can special summon this thing from your hand or graveyard, but banish it when it leaves the field. Well, it is a face up in the field. All other light machine monsters gave 1200 attack. Uh, weirdly late, lackluster uh, legacy support for a deck that no one cared about. However, I will say at least the Gradius deck is a little cooler than the BES deck, even though they're Kind of almost the same idea. Spaceships, pew pew. I don't know if you, uh, you might be able to mix them. I don't know. Do they have any cross support? Eh, whatever. I wish this deck was actually like good because, I don't know, the theme's kind of fun. I would wear like a pilot helmet, Rebel Alliance with the, the symbol helmet and, and they say things as a term in like stay on target and do a barrel roll and really just drive my opponents nuts. Might do it anyway, even if I just lose every round. Fox! Ah! Hey Einstein, I'm on your side! Oh, uh, ran, 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 ru, ran, ru? Raru, the Sage of Light, has the following effect. It's a level 4 win, dragon monster. Oh boy, this is a weird one. You can only control one of them, and if you control a spell caster monster, you can special summon this thing from your hand. And if it's destroyed by battle or card effect, you can get a monster with 1500 attack and 200 defense from your graveyard and special summon. Right. It's basically one of those familiar possessed familiars like Gigabyte and stuff and Nefarious Archfiend Eater of Nefariousness because those are the targets that have the 1500 attack and 200 defense. And you gotta control a spellcaster. I guess it goes with the, the wind girl, right? Because it's a wind. Being a battle tutor is kind of lame. Again, just way out of date. This would have been better a long time ago. Gigabyte's just better. I don't know. It, I feel like they're building these things to a deck at some point. Like, maybe? That'd be cool, I guess. But what year is this? It's a body to make other stuff. That's all it is. Okay. Oh boy, a pendulum monster. My favorite. Magical Libra. Magical Libra. Magical, not ma it's one word. Magical Libra. Magical Libra. Magical Libra. Level 4, Water Spellcaster, Pendulum Monster, Scale 5, has the following Pendulum Effect. Declare a number 1 through 6, target two monsters on your side of the field. One of them gains that number in its level, and the other one loses it. Even if it leaves the field, you can, it's a hard once per turn. Why? Oh no, I can't just keep, why modulating my levels around? This is the FA support we definitely needed. I'm not sure what the objective here is. I guess if you're playing a deck like Spirals or Cosmos or something where all your levels are all over the place, you could use this to cheese your way into a rank like four or five play maybe. Like it doesn't really help you with synchro summoning because it's like you got a tuner and a non-tuner on board and you raise one and you lower one and their, their level addition sum is the same so you didn't do any, you didn't accomplish anything. I don't know what, I don't know why you want to want to do this. It's at least a scale five level four which means you can pendulum summon itself passes like the is it an absolute crap tier. <laughs> Pendulum monster because if their scale and level are the same uh, uh, That means you pretty much just brick them all if you have one is this you don't want that It's at least a less than ideal. So I guess that's better than nothing. What are you trying to do with this? The flavor text is brilliant a sentient scale it maintains the balance of the universe, but often places stars on the wrong side the balance of the entire universe rests on the shoulders of this sentient scale and Sometimes it just screws it up Actually, actually, yeah, that explains a lot. Maybe Ryan down in the comments could enlighten me as to why you would ever want to run this in a pendulum deck, because I have no idea. All right, here we go. Hypernova Burst. It's another brilliant draw card. Hypernova Burst is a normal spell card with the following effect. Banish face down from your hand or face up on the field two monsters that can't be normal summoned. Draw two cards. It's a neg. One. Draw a card. A neg. One. Draw a card. Why do they keep giving us these? 
that so bad. Stop it. I'm a plate of my necros. I don't know what to say because a neg one is bad. A do 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 a neg one is bad. Uh, full music video for It's a Neg One Draw Card coming soon. <laughs> All right, and we also have an honorable mention. Borolodo Exchange Dragon. Ooh, it's a rank 4 with 3k attack. That's actually kind of impressive for a rank 4. M made of two dark dragons, okay. A little little less than generic, but not the worst thing you can make. Dragons is always a, always a, always a solid. You make it in the Rockets deck probably, right? Because those are all... Are those dragons? I don't know. I mean, it's for that dude from the anime, so I feel like you probably should be able to. It's pretty lame when the cover card of the set's like on a, on a worst of list. Neither player can target this exceed summon monster with card effects, except its own. Uh, okay, okay, that's that's not bad. Tar once per turn, you can detach from this card, target a monster, it loses 600 attack and defense. And then you can special summon one Boral monster from your graveyard to your side of the field, but banish it during the end phase. Also, you can't special summon other monsters, and you can't attack directly this turn. At least it's, they had the common decency of making it for the rest of the turn, so it's like, if you special summon in order to make this thing, because that's how you do XC summons, at least you can still use this effect the turn you made it. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise, this would have been like number one. Mm, slowest XC monster ever. I'm not sure what the objective here is. Uh, not being able to special summon for the rest of the turn means if you try to get back one of your Link Boral monsters in order to try to like Link climb some more, like what you would expect this thing to be doing. Like, oh, I linked away Mini Boral and now I'm gonna bring it back so I can Link summon Boral Sword or some hooey because this thing's my extender. Nah, bro. What are you trying to do with it? You can't attack directly. So you can't even really utilize the, the Boral Sword to win a game. Boral Load can't really steal something and then attack, life points. You're not playing Boral Guard. <laughs> but what are you trying to do with this? And like all the Boral monsters are extra deck monsters. So it's like, you needed to be like in the middle of a link play anyway to do this. Unless you're using it as recovery. I don't know, I don't know what the objective is. I don't know what you're trying to do. The fact that it can't be targeted by like monster effects uh, is probably the best thing about it like at worst case scenario it's just a, a a 3k beater that your opponent can't out with monster effects like cerberus so that's like actually pretty strong um so that's why it's only an honorable mention because at least that's pretty solid uh if it was more generic it'd actually be pretty pretty good xc monster and a 3k attack power on a rank four is still pretty strong uh we don't really have rank fours. Don't tend to be that powerful, so that that's that's still kind of novel. So that's why it's an honorable mention. But I, I still don't know what you're trying to do with the effect. Clear clear monsters off their board, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> oh, number one. Here we go. Oh, Tlacla. Tlacalel. Tlacalel. No human can say this word. It's it's gibberish. Talakalul, his malevolent majesty. It's level five with monarch stats. Uh, that has the following ability. If this card is tribute summoned, you can lose the duel because you shouldn't deserve to win because this card is terrible. Why are you running it? It's incredibly disrespectful. If this card is tribute summoned, you can destroy as many monsters on the field whose attack is less than the monster that was tributed in order for to summon this thing. Less than an equal, sorry. You must tribute summon in order to get its nuke effect. You needed to tribute something relatively powerful in order to actually get any like legs out of the damn thing, which really begs the question is why you did that. I guess you tributed a monarch to do this. You might pick a few things off because 2400's, you know, okay. Maybe Cleese, Sack Towers, do it. I don't know. It's just another tribute summon. I mean, I guess True Draco could, to, could cheese it just to like, clear a board but they got their traps for that i don't know it's this it's just i don't know what you're we have a million better options i don't know why we need this this would have been okay okay years ago which is like the kind of the running theme in this set but i just don't know what you're trying to do with it like it's clumsy and you need to run it in decks that have just inherently better options anyway in order to even get it to work you're not just going to put this in anything other than a monarch or true draco deck because it's 
literally monarch stats. I guess, like I said, I guess you could run it in Cleese, but you really can't do much other with it. I don't know. Feels bad, man. But anyway, guys, that was the list. Uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, dumping on all these cards as much as I did, because, oh boy. But anyway, guys, let me know in the comments below what you guys think, and remember, guys, if you don't troll the matter who will, I will see you guys next time. Hey losers, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button. Wanna watch something else? Hurry up and choose one of these. Ugh. When are you gonna make a choice? This year would be nice.